Guys, how we doing? Uh, Courtney Sky here, Good Works Tractors, talking about the Protero Dump From The Seat Material Collection System for tractors. What makes this system unique is that it's gonna be a PTO driven system, okay? So you don't have to worry about a belt driven system that's tied into your mower deck. You get like a double pulley down here, a belt that comes off the, uh, the mower deck spindle, goes over to a power flow like on what the traditional John Deere style is. This is good for not only John Deere, but also Kubota, Mahindra, Massey, Coyote, LS, New Holland, any of those tractor manufacturers that have that rear PTO. These guys have been in business for a very long time, decades, not years, but decades they've been in business. They have boots to fit pretty much any deck that's gonna be out there. Again, it's a PTO driven system. We're gonna get into the details all about it right now. Really quick, if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button underneath the video, check out the other videos on my channel and make sure you read through that description. There's gonna be a link to where you can buy this unit. You're gonna be able to get a significant GWT discount. Just call them, mention Good Works Tractors, they'll get your order placed. You go through all the options to make sure it's set up just right for your machine, you'll be good to go. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and check out that this is gonna be quick hitch compatible, all right? So you wanna specify that when you place your order because doing so is gonna give a, an extra little bracket that's included in you know the whole kit that you're gonna get to make it quick hitch compatible. One of the really good things to know about Protero, they're made in the USA up in Minnesota, just a family owned business, that's really good to know. Let's go ahead and get into some general construction notes. You're gonna have a steel liner inside this blower here, okay, with the fan and everything else. So it's not just this steel here, you're gonna have something on the inside as well, but that's gonna be driven off of that PTO right there on the back of your machine. It's a standard 540 RPM rear PTO. Boy, off of memory, I think it's like 3000 RPMs that this thing is going right here, this fan. So it is cranking it along, creating basically a vacuum, okay? So a suction from down at your mower deck, blown up through here, right through the tube, and then into your hopper. I'm praying I don't have much in this hopper right now. I haven't really done a whole lot on my yard. I overseed it about three weeks ago. This is gonna be the first time I actually mow the entire thing with it, the entire backyard, I should say. So there may be a little something in here, but hopefully not a whole lot. Basically, if you're sitting on the operator station, you're just gonna go ahead and push down right here. Very easy to do. You have two handles here, okay? So you push that one down initially, just grab onto the second handle and then pop it the whole way open here. You can see it opens up just like that. To reverse the process, boom, lock it back in place, you're good to go. You are gonna have a sight window that's kind of up here. You might be able to see it right back here as well. So you, you'll be able to tell when that hopper is full, but then just basically back it up to the pile that you want or load it onto a trailer, whatever your situation is. Open it up from the seat there and away you go. I would expect assembly time to take somewhere in that one to two hour range, just depending on your technical acumen, but really it's not too bad overall. One of the really cool features is that it does have these parking stands right here. They're very easy to take on and off. You can see just a pin going through there and holding it in place. We're gonna go ahead and demonstrate that now. So I don't need to turn the machine on in order to get the bagger system or the collection system off of the tractor here. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the three point. When it just touches the ground, I'm gonna go ahead and release uh, the pins here on the quick hitch or the levers on the quick hitch. That way it can kind of fall out and then I'll lower it the rest of the way. Okay, we've lowered just about so it can touch the ground there. That's another reason why you want to adjust your rate of drop control as well. You can see how slow it lowered right there. That rate of drop control, that dial normally in between your feet or maybe under your seat on your tractor, allows you to control how slow your attachment's going to drop. Go ahead and lower it the rest of the way. Just take a flat head and loosen up your nut here on your clamp. Well, probably in hindsight, I should have done this before I disconnected it to have a little bit better leverage. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back a little bit and then I'm gonna disconnect the PTO shaft. You'll find that it's a lot easier to connect and disconnect the PTO shaft after you pull the machine away a little bit. You just have a little bit more room in there you can kind of see it's, a, it, you know, you're kind of squared off or blocked off on both sides no matter where you go. So this kind of helps with that.
Oh, while I'm here thinking about this shaft, it will say in the manual, you wanna operate this piece of equipment with that shaft just about as level as you possibly can. Well, so as you can see, we are completely disconnected here from the tractor. You know, you could take a little bungee and just bungee up and, and kind of tie off that PTO shaft if you want to do that. Up there on the, the kind of the boot where it attaches and the, uh, and the chute that's right down here. It's just a couple of pins, the same kind of pins that are for these parking stands that hold that boot on there as well. So very easy. You can just store it on top or just store it along the ground or whatever else. This is that big awkward piece that you really don't want to have to manhandle and try to fit on there. So it's really nice and convenient that it's got this storage stand. You can see it's perfectly balanced there as well. Just kind of shift it around and slide it as you need to. You do have a few service points as well. You got some Zerks, you have one here. On this shaft for the, uh, the fan here that's in the blower system, you're gonna have uh, one or two over there for the, uh, the PTO shaft as well. You know, and this is gonna have a belt that does go from uh, over here where the PTO is driving it all the way over to your blower or your fan assembly right here as well. You might be able to see yeah, right here you got a, uh, your fan belt right there. Another Zerk I see hiding back there too. So what is that, three or four Zerks on here, but really a fairly low maintenance piece of equipment. Something that's not gonna require a lot of service, but it's gonna save you a lot of time in the fall, a lot of time in the spring. And if you want to bag with it year round, you can more than certainly do that as well. So you've heard me talk about ballast weight before. So the same thing, if you have a lot of weight on your front end, you wanna have some counterweight on the back end. Well, you can imagine once that gets full of clippings or grass and and leaves and whatever else you might pick up in there, you wanna have that same amount of weight on the front end to kind of offset that and take that bounce out and maybe prevent the front wheels from getting off the ground a little bit or losing traction and steering ability, that kind of thing. So I do have the front end loader on. I wanna try it out, see how it works with that. I'm not gonna do anything crazy, but I've also actually added uh, these five suitcase weights here, 41 pounders right along kind of the integrated rail that's on the front of the John Deere 1025R. You will notice these couple on the end here are just popped up just a, just a hair, okay? So they are actually making contact with a parking stand on this loader. I've seen online, sometimes it interferes, sometimes it doesn't. It's really that close of a call. Mine happens to make contact, but I'm really not worried about it too much. I'm more concerned about having my front end planted to the ground while I'm turning and steering and going around the yard. And in case you didn't know, I sell these suitcase weights. I sell wheel weights. I sell all sorts of good stuff. Go to goodworkstractors.com. We ship all over the country. Well, if you're interested in seeing this thing in action, that's what I'm gonna be tackling next. I'm gonna make a separate video showing kind of the field test like I like to do. This is a good product overview. Gives you a good feel for what this is all about here. Again, Protero, you purchase it directly through them. Ask for the Good Works Tractors discount. I'm telling you, it's gonna be quite significant. This is very competitively priced in the clamshell you know the dump from the seat world all right so those are going to always be more expensive systems than your traditional you know you have your bags that you pull out or some of those smaller just cheaper systems these are going to be more expensive so you have to realize that expect that don't be shocked when you see the cost prices change just depending on your model your setup they make these dump from the seat systems as well for zero turns for garden tractors they're not always going to be pto driven but you have that option available if you get the pto on your tractor well, there's always something more I want to add to a video, something I forget while I'm actually shooting it. So if you think about a question, I haven't covered it here. I'll answer it in the, the comment section below, okay? Or just shoot me an email or contact again, Protero directly. They're great to work with as well. But if you want to see this thing in action, tackling some really long shaggy grass here, we got a lot of leaves starting to fall. I'm going to use this thing throughout the fall as well. I'll probably do another more heavy duty leaf cleanup option as well, but I mow my grass normally at it one inch tall, okay? So I overseeded nearly three weeks ago. I haven't mowed. So for me, my grass is out of control besides a few areas where I just had to get in my mower and mow. This is gonna take a lot of clippings, leaves, whatever sticks have fallen. We'll see how it does. Check out that video. Hit subscribe underneath the video if you haven't done so already. Read through that description below, all sorts of helpful links. If you see some cool accessories on this tractor, you might find some other cool stuff as well at goodworkstractors.com and check out the other videos on my channel. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Just wanted to give you guys a rosy update while I've got her out here. So she is actually doing pretty well. I know she probably doesn't look like she's doing well, but for what we've been through in the last six months, 
we're making progress. So she did have TPLO surgery. I don't know what it stands for, but basically a cruciate ligament, kind of like our ACL in humans, but she tore that. Um, most likely a consequence of the steroids or some other me medications that she was on. She's been battling Lyme's disease. She's been battling um, IMPA, which is an immune-mediated immune mediated polyarthritis. So all sorts of just issues going on with her left and right. It's one thing after another. So on top of that, the latest issue is actually some sort of, well, we're not sure. We've, we've taken her to the vet yet again to a different vet just to get another opinion, but her hair, besides what was shaved off for the surgery, is falling out. It's in huge clumps all over her body. So we've had her tested for mites, that was ruled out. Uh, we've had her tested for fungus, some sort of you know ringworm or I don't know, something else. Waiting on those results, it can take up to two weeks to get a negative test. We're about a week into it uh, without getting the positive test results, but we've been bathing her in a, um, in a special shampoo to try to help with that if that's the case. So kind of working our way down the list, but it's been a rough go. However, I can say that Rosie is in really good spirits. Uh, she's back to our old doggy, so we're really happy about that. But now it's just time to, you know, kind of get her back to 100% health all around. And, um, you know, she wouldn't know. I think she'd tell you that she's back to 100% right now, but we know that's not the case. So anyway, just for those of you that are concerned and uh, always checking in on her, I really appreciate that. And, and uh, we'll keep you updated. All right, girl.